Let's be honest here. During the mid-late 2000s, a game called Cave Story came out. And of course, as we all know, there were many, many games that tried to go back to the retro 8-bit throwback style after that game came out. One of these games was Mega Man 9, where one of the selling points was this game goes back to the retro 8-bit style used back in the Nintendo era for the first six games. Yep, that's right. And it went down to the fact that they even gave the game a box art on digital marketplaces that try to look retro because after all, it ain't retro until you go as far as possible to looking as retro as possible. And of course, Mega Man 9 is no exception, giving you a throwback to everything you hated about that era. So how bad is this game? Let's start the review, shall we? So I'm going to be honest here. Mega Man 9 is one of the main reasons I really haven't touched the Mega Man series very much. I mean, I've only reviewed, like, very few Mega Man games, and for a good reason. This series is just not only rehashed, but when they're even announcing the game is a rehash, you've got a problem. So let me tell you what the whole point of this game is. Mega Man 9 is, well... It's a platformer with 8-bit graphics. I mean, there are so many of those, but considering this came out back in the same time when stuff like Scott Pilgrim was popular, it makes sense. So the gameplay is this. You run around as Mega Man, trying to avoid everything that'll kill you because literally everything will kill you in this game. Because after all, it's not 8-bit until you add artificial difficulty. Because after all, there was an excuse in the 90s and 80s, but now it's just to try to feel as retro as possible and it feels out of place. It really does. Because you're just trying to jump, you're trying to kill enemies, and you'll die a lot. While this might have been hard in the 80s, nowadays it's just flat out frustrating, especially when you have longer games. To complete the feel, the game does not, at least on the Wii version, let you use the analog sticks to control Mega Man, so you'd better hope the D-pad's good enough with these clunky controls because yes, the controls feel like they were intentionally designed to be clunky because after all, nothing says hard like a bunch of clunky controls because after all, there are some people out there who still think that having clunky controls and things that are out to kill you everywhere make a game hard. Because they don't. The music is bland and generic. It's just forgettable 8-bit music that you've heard 15 times already. I mean, sure, 8-bit music has its fans, but so does new metal. And, I mean, l look how many people buy Limp Bizkit CDs in 2014, right? The art style, as generic as it gets. Generic 8-bit stuff with generic 8-bit graphics. Because that's what we need for video games more generic 8-bit graphics that look the same as six other Mega Man games. Especially when this game came out, because that's what gaming needs, right? Of course, looking back, this all looks like some attempt to cash in on the retro gaming craze that was real big at the time, with movies such as Scott Pilgrim and the like. So all in all, this game is just another forgettable byproduct of the retro gaming craze that was real big at the time this game came out. And you know what? That retro gaming craze needs to die. I mean, we do not need more 8-bit generic platformers like this. That is all I have to say on this. This game's straight up trash, it's boring, it's not fun at all, and it will only serve to frustrate you. If you want a hard game, there are other games that are actually hard and aren't just cheap difficulty. But then again, considering how there are some people who think cheap difficulty is the thing and how if you accidentally make a mistake, you're automatically terrible at the game and the worst player ever. That's who this game's designed for. Those people. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. And go buy better games instead of eating cut-rate 8-bit garbage.